say hello to everybody and i welcome you to our innovation talk number seven it's already number seven we had great uh, topics over the last time but we have a very very special and very interesting topic today and i say welcome to ben ellerman who is our speaker today hello ben but I'm before here, thank you. we start with Ben, we are starting with Abby from the UPU Direct Marketing Advisory Board. Hello, Abby. Hello, Martin. Thank you. On behalf of the Universal Postal Union's Direct Marketing Advisory Board, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this Innovation Talk 7. Uh, we're very happy to be back after taking a, a short summer break. Uh, for any newcomers, which I seem to see uh, some new countries represented there, this session, once again, is being hosted by the Direct Marketing Advisory Board, a group of postal operators and private sector members, which aims to promote direct marketing through postal channels. Uh, as I said, we've already hosted a series of six online sessions which address the main drivers of the new ecosystem in which direct marketing operates and how postal operators can adapt and respond by building omni-channel strategies. Uh, we also address the impacts of the current uh, uh, COVID pandemic on direct marketing. All of these sessions are on the are available on the UPU DMAB website. Uh, so don't hesitate to contact Olivier Boussard or me if you need help finding them. Uh, given the success of the previous sessions, we will continue the conversation with the support of Martin Nietzsche, thank you, our moderator, and also global experts. During our discussions, a number of topics emerge as being of high interest for direct marketers and postal operators. In particular, the impact and value of artificial intelligence on the way we do business as direct marketers. In this session, we will continue to expand and explore artificial intelligence from a different emerging perspective. Therefore, we're very happy to welcome Ben Ellerman, CEO, Future Voice, who will guide this session on the theme, Conversation AI, Boosting Voice Marketing and Customer Service with Artificial Intelligence. Ben will not only show us the theory, but also take us into practice. As they say, what was science fiction 15 years ago is now a daily reality. Interacting with computers using natural language and complete sentences. So much has changed technically, but how can you make these new opportunities in marketing, sales, and service? And what obstacles still have to be overcome on the way to direct marketing and voice commerce? So on behalf of the Universal Postal Union and the Direct Marketing Advisory Board, we thank Ben for taking the time to be with us today. We wish you all a great hour of discovery and discussion. Back to you, Martin. Thanks, Abby, for this introduction from the UPU Direct Marketing Advisory Board. And yes, uh, I studied myself information technology and business in the early 90s. And one of the topics we talked about was, of course, artificial intelligence. And at that point of time, we thought, OK, maybe it's five years in the future and we will be able to talk to computers. Well, it wasn't five years, it was more like 35 years. But nowadays, it's gone reality. We can talk to computers. And I can share one story with you, which is very interesting. I was um, buying one of the first Alexas you could go to Germany. And I was putting this on, their, on our lunch table. And I, I had my wife with me and I had my three kids with me. And they were starting to talk with Alexa and they were starting to ask questions. Uh, the, the first questions they asked were about mathematics. So whether Alexa was able to help them with their homework. So they started to work on uh, mathematics, on geography. And then one of the smaller ones, the smallest one, he was 10 at point of time. He asked the question, Alexa, what is the sense of life? And the answer, of course, for all mathematic people is um, Give me one second. Alexa, stop. I have one of these things in my room and it just uh, hurt me. So uh, th the answer was 42, of course. Uh, everybody who has ever read science fiction knows why this was the answer. But the most important thing from my point of view, none, not one of my children asked the question, 
why can I speak with a computer? It was absolutely normal for them to talk to a computer, to, to talk in your normal voice to a computer and to get an answer from a computer, which was for me absolutely astonishing. For them, it was normal. So I think we are getting into a very different kind of uh, society and, of course, in a different kind of business with these things. Uh, uh, things. And Ben, Ben is the right person to teach us about it. Ben is uh, not only CEO of uh, this uh, company, Future of Voice, which, well, the name is already right. He is one of the best experts I know about the design and development of voice and chatbot clients. And not only clients, but as well the strategy behind it. And he will give us a lot of examples of how to do it, why to do it, and probably as well, he gives us, I know this already, a very interesting, well, let's do preview of the future of voice. So over to you, Ben. I know that you work for a lot of big companies. You have a great company. You're working for Allianz. You're working for Vodafone and all these big companies. We are very honored that you are with us today. And I would say the screen is yours, the audience is yours, and we are all very interested. Well, uh, thank you, Martin and Evi. Uh, a lovely introduction. Uh, I'm very happy to, um, yeah, to have the possibility to uh, join your uh, innovation talks. And uh, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something completely new that we have uh, people from all over the world listening to what, what I have to say. Uh, I guess this is my, my personal record, maybe. Uh, I'm doing some uh, teaching at the university, and uh, sometimes there we have... Uh, pretty international groups too, but um, I guess uh, this must be around 20 different uh, uh, nations uh, here, and uh, this is really impressive. Okay, but uh, yeah, let's get uh, to the topic. Um, conversational AI boosting voice marketing and customer service with artificial intelligence. Um, it's a very broad field that, uh, uh, that I want to cover in the next uh, 30 minutes. Um, so it uh, will definitely not be possible to get into every detailed uh, aspects. Uh, I will have a discussion uh, later on. So if there are questions uh, on the way, uh, make a note and uh, let's discuss it afterwards. Um, let's uh, have a slight look on the definition of conversational AI, because I really think that not everybody of you uh, has the same uh, under understanding of, of this topic. Um, and um, th the reason for that is uh, that the d definition is uh, pretty vague and uh, it's, it allows uh, pretty much instruments to being covered with, with this very definition. Um, and basically what, what you see here is on, on the left side, the three uh, technological components that are um, essential to tell if it's uh, something that has to do with conversational AI. And these are, uh, first of all, so-called conversational user interface, so front end for, for a chatbot. This uh, could be something in, uh, in voice or this could be something in text. And in the text world, you... Uh, um, can uh, probably look to the Facebook Messenger or to WhatsApp, and of course, in the in the audio world, we're, we're looking to telephony and, and so on. And then you have the natural language understanding, which uh, is uh, the, the part where you have um, yeah um, artificial intelligence uh, every time. There is no really alternative concept in modern chatbots than using um, using artificial in intelligence within the natural language understanding. This uh, is where the interpretation of what the user wants um, uh, is uh, being, um, being defined. And then um, you have the automatic speech recognition. Uh, this is, of course, something that uh, only comes in place uh, when we talk about voice bots, because a voice bot is always a text bot with an additional layer of a voice in the very beginning and one um, in, in the end, you can say. So you're, you're first uh, taking the speech and uh, transforming it to text, and afterwards uh, you're uh, using the text to transform it into voice. 
And on the right side, you have this quadrant um, where you see uh, which uh, which um, channels uh, come in place. Uh, we'll uh, dig uh, into that a, a bit deeper in a few seconds. But uh, of course, you can have voice bots, um, for example, uh, for, for the phone call, and you can have text bots, uh, for example, for for chat and messaging. And the, the very interesting thing when when it comes to conversational AI is that uh, it has a standard and this standard is pretty pretty easy um, but it's also very robust and uh, um, allows to um, create nearly everything you want on the standard because it's simply the, the dialogue is the standard yeah you have a you have a ping and a pong yeah you, you're talking to, to somebody you, you're getting an answer you're talking to a machine you, you're, you're getting an answer and you can use this technique to come up with nearly every use case you really want. Now, the essential channels um, for conversational AI are uh, these six, I would say. Um, you have uh, the Amazon Alexa, which is pretty famous and stands for itself, I guess. You have the Google Assistant, same, same there, I, I would say. Maybe not, not that uh, prominent, but uh, most of you will have heard of this. Um, and then you have, uh, in, in the text world, you have uh, WhatsApp and other messengers, of course. You have, um, uh, yeah, you have uh, messengers within uh, Instagram uh, nowadays or in the uh, Asian uh, sphere, you have WeChat. In the Russian sphere, there is another pendant. I must say, I do not know the name. If there is somebody from Russia, please type it in the comments. And um, yeah, then uh, we have um, the phone bot. Which is uh, yeah not that um, yeah yeah not that um, uh, when it comes to conversational AI the phone is maybe not the channel that you have in, in mind in the first place but uh, yeah we'll come to that a, a bit later I guess it's uh, really the one of the most important channels because the phone is uh, for, for customer communication is uh, a big uh, big thing. Then you have the website and app chatbots, so something that is happening on your website or within your app. And of course, you have uh, something like proprietary channels. So, for example, we are doing uh, uh, AR steering with voice uh, or uh, uh, we are doing in-car uh, voice projects where you can uh, yeah, steer parts of your, of your car, uh, like, like the radio or the navigation system uh, with voice. And uh, of course, there can be uh, yeah, a lot of other uh, devices that uh, yeah, it can be controlled and doesn't necessarily have to do uh, um, uh, have to do something with uh, with the channels mentioned here. Um, our customers are regularly um, doing more than one channel with us. I guess sixty percent of our customers are not only working with us for uh, uh, with Alexa, for example, but we're also doing the Google Assistant or have a WhatsApp project. Um, so it's a it's a good idea to uh, find a technology where you can yeah cover a lot of different uh, channels and um, <clears throat> yeah I, I will get to that in a minute. Um, but before I do that, um, the, the, the most important question uh, for uh, U.S. Uh, yeah, as postal operators is maybe why why should I uh, consider using conversational AI uh, instruments and um, so what we have here is the spectrum of goals that you can accomplish with conversational AI technologies and instruments. On the left side, you have uh, the customer service automation, where the goal is clearly uh, the reduction of uh, the, the cost to serve, which can be uh, reached via a full automation, where you really deflect the call. So you uh, fully automate a call that you don't need a customer service agent to conduct this very call. And you have the partial automation, where the goal is clearly to reduce the uh, AHT, so the average handling time. Um, for example, you can uh, do the authentic authentic authentication. It's a, hard to pronounce as a German guy in English language. Um, and uh, you can uh, then um, uh, dispatch the authenticated uh, customer 
to uh, um, to your customer service agent and you have an advantage because uh, the 30 seconds or maybe one minute uh, of time that the agent would have needed um, uh, is uh, safe. Then you have the customer experience, um, where the goal is clearly to improve uh, the, the customer experience for the customer. And uh, this is something that uh, can uh, be beneficial for the loyalty of, of the users or, of course, for the, uh, for the advocacy, which is good for the recommendation rate. And in the end, you have the conversational commerce, where the goal is clearly to uh, achieve incremental sales. So you can uh, make your conversion rate better, increase your conversion rate, um, or you can do uh, upselling in uh, yeah, d different detailed use cases, I would say. But um, I really think that everything you can do with conversational AI can be, uh, yeah, is, is um, uh, is interesting for uh, for the, the six dimensions, and this is something that is a bit uh, a bit techno technological. But uh, Martin and uh, I agreed that uh, it's uh, yeah maybe something that uh, yeah for you postal uh, operators, uh, um, marketeers, customer service experts. Um, this is uh, this, this is um, a, a level that is uh, appropriate, and I really find it uh, yeah, find it important to um, yeah to uh, g give you a glimpse of uh, what is what is happening in the back. And um, remember the the very versatile standard with the with the Lego plate I just showed you um, all the flexibility that is within conversational AI. Um, can um, yeah it can be shown with this technical pipeline because in the very beginning you have a lot of different uh, channels yeah there's, there's one I mentioned on, on the slide and uh, it's uh, can be the phone call it can be the messaging a dialogue it can be the uh, can be the voice assistant uh, the user is uh, is contacting uh, the the brand via one of these channels. And first of all, you have the voice recognition, of course, only for the voice channels. Um, yeah, we are working with Microsoft technology when it comes to uh, when it comes to the phone call. Um, in the voice assistant world, this is of course something that is already included technologically. So the uh, the Amazon uh, Alexa and the Google Assistant have their own voice recognition, of course. And uh, afterwards, we uh, we have text from the from the uh, different uh, different channels and uh, the text will be interpreted in the natural language understanding um, if i am a customer and i'm calling a pizza place to uh, order a pizza and i have uh, yeah, for example a phone bot that uh, tells me how, hello how can i help you and i say i like a, a pizza tonno um, then um, we have two information that will be is extracted in the natural language understanding. One is uh, the intent, and the intent is clearly an order. And the other one is the entity, or sometimes called slot, um, which will be the, the pizza tono. And then we'll take these two information sets we have extracted with artificial intelligence, these both uh, layers, the voice recognition and the natural language understanding are definitely AI layers. Um, and then we take this information and uh, put them in the dialogue management. We are where we are working with rules um, and we're working deterministically. That means that there is no AI involved in, the, in this part. And um, this is the reason why we can um, come up with uh, use cases for uh, every of the uh, goals I, I mentioned earlier. So for the customer service automation, for the customer experience, and uh, for the conversational commerce. We can have a, a stockpile of different uh, use cases within our dialogue management, which is then connected with our, uh, with our core company uh, systems. So you have your CRM system, you have your ERP system, uh, you uh, maybe have uh, some sort of uh, specific uh, databases. Um, I don't know where uh, 
U.S. postal uh, operators are storing your your um, your tracking information, uh, for example, which uh, can definitely be a very interesting use cases. Um, and you only have to connect these systems uh, one time, and then um, you, you have the connection and uh, reuse it in another use case. So this is really a, a very efficient way of uh, organizing uh, organizing a, a stockpile of um, yeah, different touch points for your customers. And um, we will definitely not have the time to dig into every channel I just mentioned. So um, I will uh, concentrate on, on two. Uh, first, I want to uh, dig a bit deeper into the smart speaker, specifically the Amazon Alexa, because I, I think this is the most prominent one. And uh, a bit later, I will uh, give you uh, yeah, a little glimpse of what will be possible or is still possible in the, uh, in the phone world. But let's have a look to the smart speakers first. Um, what I find really interesting, and this is uh, maybe something interesting uh, for, for our, uh, for our this, uh, discussion uh, later, um, is... Um, it, is, uh, isn't everybody looking to the to the smart speakers with the expectation that there should be this this one day where they are really uh, re really well established and everybody is uh, getting up in the morning and seeing uh, okay we have our our future world now where we can use this voice assistants and smart speakers within our our everyday uh, everyday life, because this is really something that I uh, yeah th th that I think a lot of people have have in their uh, in their minds when they are thinking about smart speaker, and in reality we see that um, the smart speaker ownership these are German um, this is a German statistic, um, but I guess Germany is really um, really average when it comes to that. Um, the US uh, is, uh, of course, uh, yeah, uh, even uh, even more within the voice and conversational world that, than we are. But I guess there are a lot of uh, countries that are uh, may, maybe uh, hesitating a bit more. So let's say we are average. And we saw that 26% uh, of the German adults already have a smart speaker um w w in their homes at the moment and this uh this rate arised uh, through uh 34 percent during the corona pandemic pan pandemic um which uh, means that there is a, a lot of a lot of things uh, going on and in the future we will have uh, even more people uh, using it and uh, when you're looking to um to, to the uh, question of voice assistant, then this is even um, yeah even more interesting. The smart speakers um, are uh, as the devices like the Echo Dots, or in the Google world you have the, the Nest Hubs from from Google. But um, of course you can use um, these uh, these smart speaker ecosystems also with your phone, and uh, in in the Google world for for example. You're using the Google Assistant with every Android uh, Android OS on on the phone. So there are a lot of uh, voice assistant users that don't necessarily have a smart speaker. It's always the the, the, the bigger a bigger sum of people. However, in Germany, 45% uh, of uh, the uh, of the German internet users uh, already is using voice assistants. Uh, for the digital natives, we have 59%, and you see the increase from 2019 to 2020 here. And for the digital immigrants, it's of course uh, uh, slightly uh, 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 slightly less. And if you see these, then the, the question for me, uh, or, or no, no, I, I have an answer for you. The, uh, the voice assistants are pretty, uh, pretty established, but we didn't saw that coming. It uh, it, it happened um, very uh, yeah, very silent, I would say. So uh, voice assistants are nothing evangelistic anymore, but are something that 
uh, is really uh, present in our everyday lives. But the um, use cases we are um, th that are interesting uh, interesting for us as uh, as uh, consumers um, are not the use cases everybody has in mind when we are thinking uh, in, for this future world. Yeah, uh, the, these use cases uh, are um, first of all play music or listen to the radio. Seventy nine percent. Um, are, uh, of the uh, voice assistant users are using it to play music uh, or uh, other sorts of media. And 74% are using it to control uh, devices in the house. And then you have a lot of use cases that are also relevant, but are uh, not that frequently used by, by the consumers. And this is, uh, this is something you, uh, you sh should have in mind. So. Uh, you have a, a strong basis of people that are uh, theoretically able to use your, um, yeah, your your smart speaker skill, your voice assistant application, uh, or whatever, but they are not really there to, to use it because maybe what you have uh, what you have to offer isn't that relevant at the at the moment. So this is something we can really work on. For us, um, one very interesting uh, interested uh, fact was that 45% uh, of smart speaker users uh, say they have replaced their traditional radio at home. So you, you don't need a radio anymore because you can uh, tell Alexa, I want to listen to my favorite radio station. And this is uh, something that we uh, that we use for, for Vodafone in a very interesting uh, use cases. Um, what, what we did there, we uh, yeah, somehow con converged media in a, in a new way because the, the classical um, radio uh, advertising looks uh, this way. You have a, a brand and you have your radio uh, advertising, you're shooting it out uh, to, to, the, to, to the customer. And then you're hoping that uh, maybe you can uh, use some sort of attribution uh, mechanism to tell whether or not your media in West uh, was good or not. But it's always hard to tell because it's a yeah, traditional push media and um, it, it's hard to tell what, uh, what, what the effect has been. And um, what we did with, uh, with Vodafone was that we um, established an interaction that took place right after yeah, that, uh, th that uh, message to the customer. And it looked exactly uh, that way. Um, the video is, uh, by the way, something Vodafone created for, a, uh, yeah, I guess, for, for a conference where they wanted to, to show this case. Um, but the, bottom, the, the uh, use case is bottom line. Um, I tell my Alexa to play my favorite radio station and then uh, in, in that very moment, we deliver a pre-roll, so something you, you know from YouTube when uh, you click a video and just before you can see the video spot, uh, you, you get a, an advertisement. And this is something uh, we do for exactly uh, that people that are using their Alexa to play the radio station. And we did that with a strong commercial and with a, a call to action at the very end to say, uh, Alexa, uh, um, say um, um, you can just say Alexa, uh, start Vodafone GigaCube, and um, th this was the message to the user. And if the user decides to say that in that very moment, then you have a direct conversion into the uh, so-called skill, which is the voice, voice application we created for for Vodafone. And then you have no friction at that point and the user is getting directly into from the uh, adword uh, directly into the skill where you have an interaction you can measure it and you can uh, of course even think about uh, yeah, something to identify the user so very interesting uh, uh, use case but of course, the question could be, um, what, can, can we expect something in the future that um, the smart speaker, especially Alexa, will be uh, even more present? And I really think they will be more present. And I'll tell you why. 
first of all, um, th th this is an example for, for, uh, from Amazon. Maybe uh, you saw that in the uh, in the last uh, months that you have more and more um, devices like TVs, like uh, smart home devices, and so on that have an information like works with Alexa. Yeah, uh, at uh, an Alexa, buy an Alexa, and you can steer this very device. Yeah, with uh, with your voice, and this is something that uh, the ecosystem gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which uh, means that there will be more use cases because more people are able to use it. Or you have something like Alexa for residential. This is a program where you, as a landlord, can integrate. Uh, a form of Alexa that didn't necessarily needs a specific login means uh, you can uh, you can build a hotel and put Alexa steering for the TVs and for the light and so on in every room. Gives the uh, the guests the possibility to log in if they want, but uh, they don't have to 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 steer their room. And this is something that will of course help to. Yeah, get more people into this voice experience when you accidentally uh, have the possibility to use it during your stay in the hotel. And this is something uh, Martin mentioned to me uh, yesterday. I found it so interesting that I put it in the uh, in the presentation. It's uh, Alexa for hospitals and senior living communities. So what you uh, saw on the slide before for hotels is really coming for. Uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the healthcare sector, yeah, because it's uh, very easy even for uh, people that uh, don't look, uh, yeah, especially uh, <laughs> digitally native, I would say, yeah, to uh, to, to use them in a, uh, in, a in, in the average uh, in the average day living. And this is something that. I really think will will be a strong um, will have a very strong uh, impact for uh, the usage of uh, the smart speaker. Um, these are the um, uh, this is the new Echo 15 Echo Show 15 uh, from from Alexa. Uh, it's a very uh, very top. It's a nice looking um, a new uh, Alexa with a very big uh, screen that can be put it vertically or horizontally. And um, that, that can be used in, um, yeah, in, in, a, in a lot of uh, contexts where you need the display additionally uh, with your voice. Let's say a shopping experience, you want, to, you want to shop something. Or for you as postal operators, think about an order tracking via Alexa, where you have not only the information where, uh, where your uh, shipment is at the moment, but maybe in the future uh, have a, a map where you, you can see a live, okay, my, my postal carrier is here and it stays on, the, uh, stays on this uh, screen uh, while you're uh, washing uh, your dish so that you know when uh, the uh, postal guy will be at your doorsteps. Um, and in the bottom, you have the new Omnia series, which is... Um, you know, which is Amazon entering the uh, ZTV uh, Z Z TV industry. And uh, these TVs have um, all the features that a normal TV has, but also a built-in Alexa with a microphone, microphone in it. So you will definitely be able to uh, have a very immersive experience using your voice. And of course, then we, we can use it to build experiences within Alexa where we are not only steering the voice, but also steering what's on uh, what's on the screen. And at the moment, um, we we as an agency see that um, the, the the brands are a bit they are hesitating for in investing in doing something uh, visually uh, with uh, we are with the smart speaker devices. Um, the reason for that is um, it's uh, only a small amount of uh, a small per percentage amount of um, of users who has um, uh, has uh, have the display at the moment, and in the future I really think it will be a lot more. So uh, um, and and you have uh, interesting use cases. So this will be uh, yeah this will be a boost, a serious boost, definitely.
Yeah, now um, we will uh, have uh, something which is a bit more uh, interactive and I want to show you uh, a, little, a little phone demo. Um, therefore, I will, uh, I will take my phone and I will put it on, on the speaker here and um, I will stop my screen sharing for one second because I want to show my, my browser now. Just one second. So everybody can see my brown. Oh, this wasn't something I wanted. Sorry. A lot of windows here. Okay. So this is um, yeah uh, our technology that we're using for most of our projects. So we are not an. Um, yeah, we are not a software uh, yeah, software company, but we are an agency that is uh, using tech agency that is using various uh, softwares. But this one is uh, the one we love most. It's called Palo Up, and um, I will uh, I will show you uh, or you will hear my dialogue with uh, the bot that is um, that you can see here. So this is a so-called graph where this dialogue is built. And um, I will show you on my screen uh, what is happening in the dialogue between myself and, and the bot. So um, it's maybe a bit, uh, yeah, a bit small to, uh, to to witness, but uh, I guess you will uh, you, you will get uh, you will get a little like, impression. And this is a demo insurance um, where uh, yeah I'm I'm an insurance. Um, a customer with uh, the so-called Kronos insurance that doesn't exist, of course, because it's just a demo. And uh, I, I think the use case could maybe be uh, um, interesting for you as a postal operator because it's about uh, changing an address. And now I will call. Oh, and welcome to Kronos Insurance USA. What can I do for you? Um, I want to change my address for my car insurance. Perfect. And what insurance is it about? It's my car insurance. I would be happy to record your new address for a car insurance. What is your insurance number? My insurance number is PA555666. So your insurance number is PA555666, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. All right. And when's your birthday? It's the 4th of December, 1982. Thank you. With this, I was able to authenticate you successfully. What is your new address that I may save in the system? It's 680 Point Lobos Avenue, San Francisco. The address is 680 Point Lobos Avenue in San Francisco, California, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, I have successfully saved your new address in our system. Is there anything else I can do for you? No. Thank you and have a pleasant day. Goodbye at your Kronos Insurance USA. Okay. I hope this was uh, was a bit Im uh, impressive. Um, you maybe noticed that uh, I didn't say the uh, uh, California and that the system came up with California by itself. This is because we are uh, we are using the uh, Google Maps API in uh, real time to uh, uh, yeah, uh, make the address uh, plausible and uh, add some additional information. I'm just uh, resharing my presentation. Give me a second. And um, yeah, this is uh, this, this is our approach of um, bringing the uh, experience that you have. Uh, on Alexa and uh, the, the other smart speakers uh, to the phone, and I guess we are uh, we are pretty uh, successful with this uh, at the moment. Uh, you all know this, uh, uh, I would say, rather uh, 
uh, rather annoying uh, phone experiences from the past where you have to use the, uh, the touch tones uh, to, to navigate and you have uh, very long, long menus because it wasn't really uh, possible to work with artificial intelligence. And nowadays this is possible and this is why you can uh, really leverage uh, use cases that are completely new. And uh, what I want to show you now um, is the so-called custom neural voice. Um, it, this part is, is a bit complicated because uh, the custom neural voice we just uh, created is uh, yeah, only uh, available in, in German language uh, at the very moment. Um, but uh, Martin and I agreed that this uh, little play uh, we prepared could be interesting for you. So um, uh, time to play. Um, I will uh, play four uh, voice samples in the next seconds, and uh, some of them are spoken by myself, and the other ones are spoken by my custom neural voice, which is a, a voice that we uh, created with artificial intelligence. So this voice learned how to sound exactly like me. And uh, yeah, since uh, you won't be able to understand because it's German ang uh, language, you can uh, focus uh, only on on the voice. First sample. Ich bin morgen selbst nicht da, da ich ein wichtiges Meeting im Bereich Sicherheit im Flugzeug habe. Second sample. Eine Ameise ist ein Apfel auf eine beachtliche Art und Weise. Third sample. Der Grundton für die männliche Stimme liegt bei etwa 125 Hertz. And last but not least, for sample. Ich starte deinen Timer für neun Minuten. Okay, now um, I guess uh, everybody of you uh, have, have an idea. Oh, I, I, I see Martin, this means something. It'd be a good chance for everybody to put into the chat now ah. which voice samples are bad. So, if you put one and three, you think that one and three was Ben. If you put two, you think only two was Ben. But I think, Ben, you already told us two of them are you and two of them are the bot, right? Exactly. So which are Ben? One, two, three, and or four. What do you think? That's interesting now. Let's good, see. good idea, Martin. That's dialogue. One and four are Ben saying Vasil, two and four is Ben. <laughs> Can you play them again, Abby? <laughs> yes, do it again. Can you okay. do it again? Sure thing. Okay, here we go. Ich bin morgen selbst nicht da, da ich ein wichtiges Meeting im Bereich Sicherheit im Flugzeug habe. That Next was one. Eine Ameise ist ein Apfel auf eine beachtliche Art und Weise. That was two. Der Grundton für die männliche Stimme liegt bei etwa 125 Hertz. That was three. Ich starte deinen Timer für neun Minuten. And that was four. Who do you think is Ben? One, two, three and or four. Two is Ben. One is Ben. Two and four is Ben. One and four is Ben. Come on. Nobody thinks number three is Ben. That's interesting. But a lot of people are thinking number one is Ben. Number one and two. <laughs> so I think on what we can already agree, we are not really sure. <laughs> we are not really sure who is Ben. If I see this, so Ben, would you like to give us the results? So the first one was the neural voice. The second one was original. The third one was original. And the last one was neural two. So it would have been two and three. So again, nobody was right. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, Ben, up to you. What, what you can see here is that this really works 
very very good and uh, of course it's not not only good to prank your mother or uh, the next thing i want to do is uh, speak french this is something i wanted to accomplish all my life because i, I love spending time in uh, in, in france uh, and uh, i'm not not good at the language and um, this is something you you can do but but of course the the, the most commonly seen use cases are um, to synthesize text media um, and the other one that is especially important for us is if you have a phone bot that works very well, then you want your own brand voice and use it in real time for dynamic content so uh, that, that you, for example, can uh, plausibilize uh, uh, the, the customer number you just uh, un understood or say, say an address. This is something you cannot do if you have just a recording. You need a thin synthetic voice for that. And um, yeah, uh, may maybe uh, very, very short be because uh, I really think I'm a bit over time. Um, what uh, what is necessary to do this technically? Uh, of course, you can uh, simply do this with us. But uh, I find it very interesting that uh, Microsoft, which is our uh, technology partner uh, here, uh, used 3,000 hours of audio material to uh, as training data to um, um, to build a so-called transfer teacher model. So they created, a, if you want so, um, a, a voice that is very, very uh, adaptable. And uh, this is the basis for a so-called fine-tuned teacher model in German language. So we decide for, uh, for the German model. And then uh, we take several hours of, uh, of uh, material. Um, I guess it, it's something... I, I've been in, in the studio for two half days, I, I would say. So you maybe have two to four hours of material and uh, use it to uh, generate uh, a, a specific training data. And then in the end, uh, you have your uh, custom neural voice uh, model, which is uh, there and available for every uh, text you want to uh, transform into uh, into my voice. This is uh, how it works. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, th th this is uh, something uh, something from from the studio. But I will uh, go over this uh, th this specific voice files right now because uh, I guess this is not not so interesting. But the message is you you need. Uh, uh, you need a bandwidth of um, uh, of different uh, so-called phonemes um, to uh, um, being placed in different sentence contexts to uh, have a voice that is uh, then able to cover uh, yeah every sentence you can possibly come up with. And, uh, so. so um, I, I saw in the chat that somebody raised a question regarding the, the dark side of uh, of chatbots, and I I must say that uh, regarding this custom neural voice, I find this a very interesting discussion, and I'm happy to tell you that uh, for the uh, Microsoft technology, you have a lot of restrictions and the ethical uh, process that uh, guarantees that nobody can uh, use it as a uh, as a tool to, for, for example, uh, clone the voice of Angela Merkel, which would definitely uh, uh, be a thing that, that is possible. So uh, you need to um, uh, fill out a, a complex form where you say what, uh, what the purpose of, uh, of, of the voice is. And also as a speaker, you have to record a special sentence where you say that you're agreeing with uh, the overall uh, principles uh, behind this custom your voice. Yeah, and um, yeah, this was uh, the, uh, the third uh, little glimpse from the uh, glimpse from the voice and conversational AI world. Uh, in in the end, uh, I just want to return to the spectrum of goals of conversational AI project. This is a slide from uh, from the beginning, and uh, um, um, I um, thought a bit about what could be possible cases for U.S. postal operators. Um, so uh, I simply uh, brainstormed and um, put it them in the boxes. Uh, within customer service automation, I would say that 
uh, if you have service calls incoming, you can definitely think about the intent recognition. What uh, does my customer want? Who's the responsible uh, agent or the agent with the right skill? And you can also authenticate uh, and route uh, these calling uh, customers to um, yeah, uh, to um, essentially uh, lower the uh, amount of time uh, that is needed to fulfill your customer service operations, so reduction of AHT. Uh, then you have uh, for phone and messenger uh, the, the order tracking, um, which is maybe something that uh, some of you are already doing at the moment. Um, also for phone and messenger, you have a change of destination. You just saw how uh, good the address change uh, worked uh, over the phone um, for, for for bigger shipments and packages. This could be um, something uh, uh, something uh, very promising. Um, if you look to customer experience, um, um, then uh, Alexa or Google Assistant case is uh, very interesting, like like a wizard for shipment fees. At least in Germany, it's very complicated to. Uh, to tell if uh, the very thing you want to ship to to somewhere in which uh, category it belongs. And I guess it's, it's something that could be really uh, covered uh, uh, good uh, within a voice workflow. And also uh, the digital uh, postage uh, via voice. Um, also, I only know it from Germany, but uh, I, I can use my my pencil to, um, to to write a, a code on the uh, on, on the package an online code that has been generated. Why not um, deliver this uh, code directly after the wizard? Maybe uh, in the voice experience. And if it comes to conversational commerce, what about a postcard system to uh, yeah allow people that accidentally uh, uh, forgot how uh, th that they wanted to uh, send a, a card to, to to their grandmother? Um, maybe Alexa, uh, let's send a postcard to uh, to somewhere, and then you uh, you spell the text, and you have a, a technology to uh, you know. You use a random photo at the front, and then uh, write down the, uh, the the text as uh, so that it looks in a handwritten manner. Could be a thing, or um, yeah, pick up my shipment uh, in the office place. Could also be a very good uh, good idea. Like uh, yeah, I need uh, somebody to, uh, to to pick up my uh, <coughs> my twenty six boxes. I uh, I want to send uh, um, this day. And that has been my uh, my little keynote, and I'm looking forward to a good discussion. Ben, thanks a lot. First of all, I would like to do some clapping for everybody. Well, I think uh, everybody was very interested in that one. We got a lot of questions already. So thanks a lot for that. I, I really like your last idea to have a bot to pick up my parcels. So probably I need not only a voice bot for that, but something some some real bot who can move around and get my package but that's something for a different um, presentation probably we got some questions already some around the the bad and dark and the side of ai but we got some questions around um the use of case i would like to start with that one so gustavo asked is there a, a global standard uh, that currently works across different conversational AI devices? So can, the, the example you just showed, at, uh, showed us with your phone, would it be possible um, to use the same software to use it on, on Alexa, the same one to use it on Google Assistant and so on? So is that some kind of standard to this? Um, there is no uh, standard like a, like a norm or something like that, but uh, technology-wise, this is exactly what this uh, platform we, we are using uh, is doing. So we are using the same platform that, that we call a channel agnostic for, for phone, for Alexa, for Google Assistant, uh, for, for the messengers and for the on-site chat. And okay. We are then, um, yeah. You, you have maybe you, you can, uh, yeah. If, if you have this in mind, there is a, a base dialogue, and then you have specifics that are relevant for for every channel. But uh, in the end, you'll you have a lot of uh, you have, have a lot of standardization going on, and especially when it comes to the training of the AI, uh, it can be very beneficial to uh, yeah to bundle everything in one platform. Yeah. 
that makes sense, especially that you do not have to develop everything twice or three times or four times, but you're just once. Okay, makes sense. Another question asked by Bernard was about the, the storage of this data. So are the data used in conversational apps are usually being stored or are they just, well, ephemeral? So you're just used while I'm talking to the device and then they are away. Um, you can decide that. Um, at, at least they are, uh, yeah, they're uh, used during the, the very conversation. And um, if you uh, want to, to, to store uh, them, or, or I would say it's nece necessary to, to store uh, the transcribed uh, text from, uh, from voice or the text prompts the user made for some days to train your models, but then you can erase them. And uh, when it comes to the smart speakers, this is uh, something important I want to add. There is, there is sometimes this... Uh, there is this anxiety about Alexa is listening all the time and sending everything to the cloud. Um, this is something that is definitely not happening because uh, there are yeah, two technologies that uh, come into place. One is a ship within the device and this ship can only do one thing. Uh, like if you're telling Alexa, then uh, it's activating to listen and send every information to the cloud. And um, this ship can definitely do nothing besides uh, detecting the word uh, Alexa and Echo. Okay, that makes sense. Another question was about the usage of this data for the, well, the large companies. I think Yasiem is talking about the GAFROMs of this world, Google, Alexa, Amazons and so on. So do they really have an advantage by using this technology or is this something where you think that, for example, a postal operator would be, would be a good company to, to use this uh, technology as well and to get some advantage out of that? You mean in terms of creating your own ecosystem? I don't think that a postal operator could create an own ecosystem on that, but probably the usage of that ecosystem. I'm not really sure I get the question. So um, the, the original question was, was, was about privacy violations. So um, are the large companies collecting all kinds of data from the consumers? And I think you already answered that one because you said, well, they do not really do that. They just, well, do the translation, the usage of the things, but they do not really store this data or use this data, um, if I got you right. But my question was getting from there to the usage of this technology. And I think that would be interesting to see. Well, they are using this technology already, but wouldn't a postal operator be as well able to use that technology? Sure thing. I mean, um... The, the, the advantage of the big ecosystems is, of course, that they use a lot of uh, incoming data to get their AI models better. So it's not completely true that none of the data is stored, but I guess it's really stored in a manner that is uh, no privacy uh, violation. I would say that. Um, and as a postal operator, you can uh, yeah, use, uh, uh, yeah, um, broad parts of this uh, technology for, for your own purpose without uh, connecting too deep to, uh, to the big ecosystems. This is mm. exactly what, what I showed in, in the phone case. Uh, we, we are using a Microsoft technology in speech to text because this is really the, the best one you can uh, use at, at the moment. We benchmarked a lot and it makes no sense for us to, to, to create something like that by our own. But after that, um, yeah, we have uh, everything uh, exactly un under control. So we know uh, which data is coming uh, from where and we decide where we want to store them. And uh, in Germany, mm -hmm. for example, data privacy is, uh, is really a hassle. We are, very, uh, uh, yeah, we, we are very sophisticated regarding that in Germany. If you're working in digitalization, then it's really a pain in the ass. Um, uh, and um, 
our our uh, automation pipeline is compliant with German uh, data protection. So I, I guess there is really no, no reason why a postal operator shouldn't be able to uh, mm. find a, um, yeah, a compliant way, let's say. You had that example about the usage of voice and we all, well, we're wrong, which one is you and which one is the artificial part. Um, and you already said that you had to fill out forms with Microsoft to make this possible. So to reduce the risk of misuse of this kind of voices. How do how big do you see the risk of the dark use of AI, the dark, uh, bad use of AI and, and chatbots? Is it something that is really where you really think that we will have a problem with this in the near future, that, that somebody is calling me and asking me and uh, after five minutes, I, I, I get the feeling, okay, I'm not really sure whether this is a person or not. Uh, so do you think this is possible in the near future? So there is a dark side coming up? When it comes to chatbots and dialogue automation, I'm skeptical uh, or let's say I don't have any fear that this is getting in the wrong direction because um, you have this deterministic component uh, in the middle in most of uh, most of the chatbots. Uh, there is something going on in uh, in re research and development uh, at the moment to uh, use artificial intelligence uh, in the decisioning too. But this is uh, this is future and it's uh, also something where the learning um, the learning mechanisms are supervised, meaning that. Uh, the customer cannot uh, cannot manipul manipulate the bot uh, if he's uh, saying specific things. So this is only something that we can accomplish, and we we are the creators of the bot and have a have a mission. So um, no risk there, I would say. Um, regarding the uh, custom URL voice, I would say that. Uh, yeah, that this is something where we need to uh, pay attention. Uh, when I say we, I mean all the world, because um, yeah, you saw how this, uh, how good this uh, can work, and uh, you maybe uh, all have seen um, yeah movies or TV series lately where this uh, topic of deep fakes uh, has been mentioned, and. Uh, I mean, Microsoft has this ethical mechanism because it's a big Microsoft. But uh, yeah, what about uh, what about uh, hackers that uh, come up with uh, with their own technology? This will definitely be possible, and I guess uh, yeah, there has uh, has to be some yeah technology uh, to to determine uh, this better, and this will definitely be there. Thanks a lot, Ben. It's already five past five in Germany, so at least five minutes past our normal stopping time. Abby, um, if you push your microphone to on, we might be able to hear you. Abby? How about this? Is it working? Very Perfect. good. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for a wonderful presentation and bringing us into an even broader perspective with direct marketing and uh, with AI. It was fascinating for me. And yes, hopefully uh, the postal operators will take something away from this to think about uh, developing this for tracking packages or other uh, assorted things. Uh, I wanted to let everyone know that there will be an innovation talk eight. Uh, it's uh, the theme is on offline, uh, online and offline. What is the winning formula? It will be held on Monday, December 6th, uh, same time, 5 to uh, five o'clock to uh, 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And Prof uh, Professor Dr. Ralph uh, Kreutzer will be um, Professor of Marketing uh, at Berlin School of Economics and Law, will be our guest speaker. And everyone will receive their invitation. Uh, it will be posted on the you uh, DMAB website, also the UPU um, Postal Direct Marketing LinkedIn site. Uh, we hope you all will join us and uh, everyone be safe and we look forward to seeing you next time. And Martin, as always, it is a pleasure to have you as our moderator and we look forward to seeing you back in December. Thank thanks you. a lot, Abby. Thanks for making this possible and thanks a lot to Ben. I, I personally found this a very, very interesting presentation again, and I was uh, very happy to have some pre-sessions with Ben. 
and I'm totally astonished about his voice, to be honest, and the voice samples we heard. So this is really showing that technology is quite advanced. And I think the cases Ben showed to us, and especially the ideas he had about using voice uh, technology in postal operators were really interesting. So thanks a lot, Ben, for all your time and your work going into this presentation. And yes, thanks to everybody attending. And we are seeing again, hopefully, on the 6th of December to our last session of this year, the last innovation dialogue this year. And I'm happy to see you then. Thank you. Bye bye. And if you have any questions, say send an email to Ben, send an email to Abby, send an email to me or contact us via LinkedIn and we are happy to answer. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you all.